I'd like to talk a few minutes about understanding God's judgment and how God's judgment is the result of rejecting His kindness and goodness. You see, now this verse uh, was riveted in my heart one day, it was just a casual comment by a particular speaker, but he read Isaiah 28, 21 that says, judgment is God's strange or unusual work. I think he said something like this, give God half a chance and he'll bless. Well, God yearns to bless you when you personalize this. Lamentation 3.33, he does not afflict willingly. Ezekiel 33.11, he gets no pleasure in the death of the wicked. John 3.17, God sent his son to the world, not to judge the world, but the world might be saved through him. You see, judgment is a result of rejecting his goodness, his kindness, ultimately his greatest gift, the gift of his son. You see, we see this so clearly in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, he says, Because you have despised or think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. And because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you're storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You see, the last judgment will be a revelation. See, as you look out now, it looks like people get away with things. It looks like if you want a prophet, well, you just don't tell the truth certain times. Uh, but no, the last judgment will be a revelation. It will be a revelation of the righteous judgment of God. When God writes the last chapter, it will show that God is a righteous God and God will judge. But the good news that I'm saying is this, God yearns for you to escape that judgment. God yearns to bless you. That's why when his son's birth was announced, he says, I give you good tidings or good news of a great joy in the birth of Jesus. Jesus endured our judgment. He endured our hell and he wants you to experience his goodness. You see, people look at the world and they see all of its pain and all of its suffering and then they look at God through the glasses of this broken world and suffering world and pain and, and, and they say, God, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with you. As opposed to looking at God and all of his perfection and saying, how could we have rebelled against you and messed up the paradise that you created? You see, yes, sin has spoiled the paradise God's created, but God is still in control. And the glorious thing is that he and his perfection is still in control, working out his plan, and one day his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And every knee will bow the knee to Jesus, and he's giving you out of his great goodness the invitation to bow the knee today to your wonderful Lord and to be totally freed from his judgment because the Savior that he sent in the world, Jesus Christ, bore your judgment, that you could experience his goodness. And as you look to him, he's even able to work together for good the pain that you experience in this broken world. Lord, thank you for your desire to deliver us from judgment, and we honor you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.